was it? I know the death of the cattle, but I think it was the flies. Yeah, okay. All right. So six saw the festering bulls, and we were in the seventh one, the, the plague of hell and lightning and the hailstorm. Uh, and that's where we left off. We were talking about about that. So that was not a good day for them. We also looked at where God had told uh, told Pharaoh. Moses warned Pharaoh. He says, you better go tell your servants to get everything they've got in. Of course, there wasn't much left from the cattle that had just died not too much earlier. So they either bought some from the Egyptians, I mean the Israelites, or they went and stole them. I'm not sure which. Maybe some of both even. Uh but we know that they had some because some of them were smart enough to bring everything in so that the hailstorm did not kill them. But anything that was left out was killed. Uh, it didn't take them long uh, to call for Moses there in the 27th verse. Uh, and this, this time I have sinned, Pharaoh says. This time I have sinned. Uh, the Lord is righteous and I am not, basically is what he says. And he says, if you'll give me the chance, I'll, I'll do what you want. Just ask you to take it away. Okay? This may be the second time he has used uh, that phrase that I have sinned. Um, the eighth plague is what? Locusts. Locusts. Um, Moses and Aaron returned back to Pharaoh again and asked him one more time to let the people go. Uh, what is it that his officials say this time? Anybody remember? Pharaoh's officials. We're destroyed. How long are you going to let this last? Let them go. Let them go. So, so his people got on board with letting them go. It's only taken eight, seven plagues. This will be the eighth one coming up. Um, so, don't you know that Egypt lies in ruin, they said there in verse, uh, I didn't write it down. It'll be one, two or three, somewhere around there. So, Pharaoh says, okay, but only take the men, right? What does Moses say to that? No. We've got to take everything with us, Okay. So Moses is the one that says, never mind. Never mind. Uh, and then Moses talks to him about this locust that is coming. Okay? Um, if you look in the book of Joel, you'll see another story about locusts. And, and, uh, and I don't know if Joel is referring back to the lo this time of the locusts or if this is another time. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I didn't study it that, that closely. But if you look at Joel, Joel, almost all of Joel talks about locusts. And there in the first chapter, verses 2 through 6, he says, Hear this, you leaders of the people. Listen, all who live in the land. In all your history, has anything like this happened before? Tell your children about, the, about it in the years to come. And let your children... Tell their children, pass the story down from generation to generation. After the cutting locusts finished eating the crops, the swarming locusts took what was left, and then came the hopping locusts, and, the, and then the stripping locusts. Uh, wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you wine drinkers. All the grapes are ruined, and all your sweet wine is gone. A vast army of locusts has invaded my land, a terrible army, too numerous to count. Its teeth are like lion's teeth, its fangs like those of a lioness. It's, it's kind of the same thing here. Um, we're, we're told in the story back in Exodus that, that the east wind came and it brought the locusts in the morning, right? Now, what was it that they had to eat? We just had the hailstorm, right? Was there anything left? Yeah. If um, if you know anything about farming, and some of y'all probably do, you know that all crops don't come in at the same time. 
I mean, uh, when we were on the farm, it was you, you, you did this now, and you waited till this time to do this one, and this time to do this one. That way, when you were harvesting this one, that one was growing, and then when you got through with that one, it was time to harvest this one, and then you moved on to the last one. The wheat had not sprouted yet. And some of the trees were probably just starting to bud. Because if you read on down, uh, this is probably somewhere between March and April um, of our calendar. So things are starting to bud. Uh, I, I remember when we were a kid, when I was younger and I was on the farm a lot, you would, you would see some things would bud out really quick. And you would say, no, I'm not paying any attention to that one because it buds really quick when it gets a little warm. It was the walnut trees that we looked at. When they budded, winter was over because they weren't, they weren't coming out until it was plenty warm. Uh, but some of, the ha- some, of the, some of the hail did not, it didn't get the wheat because it hadn't came out yet. And then there was some, the story tells us that were some of the uh, trees sprouting. Uh, the locusts will get it all. Locusts will get all of it. Um, Joel calls this, if you read the book of Joel, Joel calls this an army like you've never seen before and will never see again. Never seen one like it before, never seen it again. Go in there and read his description of this army that comes and just takes over and ruins them. And ruins them. Um, There in Exodus, the 10th chapter, 16 through the 18th verse, Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses. Didn't take him long his time. I have sinned against the Lord. We heard that before? Yes, we've heard that before. I've sinned against, against the Lord, your God, and against you, he confessed. Forgive my sins just this once. Just this once. And plead with the Lord your God to take away this death from me. So Moses left Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh's court, and pleaded for the Lord. How how are we with our addictions? Anybody addicted to anything? It don't have to be a bad thing. Anybody addicted to anything? Come on, I know somebody is because I am. Uh, caffeine, coffee in the morning. Got to have it. I mean, before I go to work, I pour mine and then I drink it for the next two or three hours. Yeah. What else? Cell phone. That's right here. And if it's not right here, if I wear a Bluetooth and I get out to my truck and start heading to work, it goes zzz, zzz, Right? Tells you you don't have your phone with you, or you didn't feel it go zzz to tell you how far it was to work, right? I I get in I get in the I get into my vehicle to go to the prison on Sundays, and guess what it tells me? It tells me how far I'm going to the prison. Uh, I went to Susan's house two Sundays in a row and practiced singing one time. The third Sunday when I got in my truck to go over to practice singing with it, guess what my phone told me? How far it was. What other addictions do we have? Huh? TV what? Watching TV. That's a bad one of mine. Yeah. Coming here on Wednesday night. It's an addiction. Can be. So so if if they are sinful addictions though, and I won't ask you to name those for yourself, but if they are sinful addictions, what do we do when we ask for forgiveness? Yes. This one time. It, and, and does it happen again? And again? Uh, it, it's, this is kind of like an addiction here that, that Pharaoh's got going on. Uh, are we much different than Pharaoh? We ourselves? He's addicted to power. That is right.
Yeah. When Moses came to Pharaoh the first time and he said, let my people go, the Lord says, let my people go. What was it that Pharaoh said? Who is this Lord that I should listen to his voice? That's what he said. Who is this, who is this God? And so that would go along with your power. Not only the power they had over the people, but the power he had over the whole nation. Um, and him not wanting to give it up. Uh, verse 20 there, it says, And the Lord hardened his heart again. So if you think back to what we just talked about, you can see some of, some of what uh, he's saying here in this ver verse 20 here, harden his heart again. And, we, and we've seen this over and over again as we've read down through these chapters. Now let me ask you a question. Could Pharaoh have done right from the start? He could have. He could have said, all right, you're right. It's not right to do this. And God is powerful or more powerful than I am. Let him go. But why, did he, why didn't he let him go? Pretty much what Drew told us. So, could he have done this right? Um, could he have done right after some of these plagues? Like he said he would. When he asked him to disappear? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me ask another question. Do you think by the eighth plague that he's figured out who God is? Or that he has a lot of power that Pharaoh can't match? We weren't keeping up. Remember his magicians kicked out where? Number three. Number three. They made blood, they made frogs, and they couldn't make the lice. All right. Yeah, that's what they started saying, yeah. He just couldn't let them go, right? A lot of them, yeah. So his addiction is that he can't what? He can't. He can't let them go. He's told. He's told him that he'll let them go three or four times, but then change his mind, right? So that's his addiction. Can we say that about a lot of things in our lives? Yes. Free labor. <laughs> yeah. Riley got too old and does too much now, right? <laughs> yeah. Free labor. Um, but can we say this about the things in our lives? Think back to the very beginning when Moses stood before the bush and his, one of his biggest complaints was, is I can't speak, right? You remember what God told him finally? He asked him, he says, who made your mouth? He says, I can, make, I can make it speak or I can make it dumb. I can make your ears work or I can make them not work. Okay? I can make you see or I can not make you see. Okay? Um, ears to hear or not. Jesus says in many places, he who has the ears to hear what? Let him hear. Let him hear. Does that mean you can't hear what he's saying? I don't think so, because he's talking to a crowd of people that's listening to every word he says. Listen to every word he says. Peter's attitude, who, Peter's attitude, it, it drove him to deny Jesus, right? It was the attitude that he had at the time. Uh, can we say that God caused that? And how about Judas' desire for money? 
that drove him to betray Jesus. Can we say that God caused that? How about Adam when he ate the fruit in the garden? Can we say that God caused that? Um, I, I think we can say yes to all those because God made us. But the one thing he, he doesn't do is reign over our will. Each and every one of these could have made a different choice. But it's, it's, it's how do I look at life. It's how do I approach things. It's how do I look at the things that go on in my life. Is, are they right or are they wrong? Do I, do I humble myself before God? Or do I have a little bit of pride and I'm not going to do that? Um, so when we look at, look at Pharaoh hardened his heart, sometimes we want to say, well, that's not common. That's not fair. But if you look at it, all the other things in the Bible, and look at your life, God made me who I am. I make the choice to do right or wrong. I make the choice to honor Him, or I make the choice to dishonor Him. Right? All right. It's our free will. Uh, plague number nine, darkness. So there in the t 22nd through the 29th verse of the 10th chapter, it talks about the, the plague of this darkness. And once again, I am not sure how God drew the line around Goshen, but it was not dark in Goshen. And it talks about the darkness being three days and three nights, or for three days, which would be a 24-hour span, the way I look at it. For three days, it was total darkness. And if you read through there, you'll see where they, they, couldn't, they couldn't even move because they couldn't figure out where they were. Um, total darkness. Anybody better ever been in total darkness? In a cave? It was, it was out in the middle of a boat too, right? Yeah, I mean... I, we used to have a cave over where we used to live, and we would go down in it, and we'd get in there, and we'd turn that light off. Man, if that light would have never came back on, we'd have never found our way back out of there. Uh, total, can't see in front of you. Can you can you feel the darkness on you? You can't. It gets to where you can't breathe. These people did it for three days. Three days. Three days and you can't move. If you want a good study, go study the many times in the Bible that it says three. Uh, you got Jonah in the belly of the whale. How many days? Three. You got total darkness here for three days. Jesus was in the grave three days. Uh, verse 24. Finally, Pharaoh called Moses. Go and worship your Lord. But leave your flocks and herds. You may even take your little ones with you. No, Moses said, you must provide us with animals for sacrifice and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. Skip down to verse 27. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart once more, and he would not let them go. Verse 29. Very well, Moses replied after Pharaoh had told him to get out of his face. He says, you'll never see me again. There in verse 29. So we've, we've been through nine plagues. Here in, here in the um, 11th chapter, we're going to see the 10th plague announced, but it's not going to take place until after the next couple chapters, I believe. So 1 through 10. Then the Lord said, I will strike Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with one more blow. After that, Pharaoh will let, his, let you go. He will let you leave his country. In fact, he will be so eager to get rid of you, he will force you out. Tell all of Israel, men and women, to ask their Egypt neighbors for articles of silver and gold. Now the Lord caused Egyptians to look favorably upon the people of Israel. And Moses was considered a very great man in the land of Egypt. Why would that be? Why would the Egyptians think him to be a great man? 
He does some pretty cool stuff. Where was he 41 years ago, though? Who was he 41 years ago? 43, 44, whatever it is. He, he, I don't know if he was in charge, but he was up there. He was in the palace. He was in the palace. Yeah. Now look at verse 4. Moses had announced to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, at midnight tonight I will pass through the heart of Egypt. All the firstborn sons will die in every family in Egypt. From the oldest son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the oldest son of the lowliest servant girl who, who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all the livestock will die. Then a loud wail arise throughout the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has ever heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. All of the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall on the ground before me. Please leave. They will beg, hurry, take all of, all your followers with you. Only then will I go. Then, then, burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Now the Lord told, had told Moses earlier, Pharaoh will not listen to you, but then I will do even more mighty miracles in the land. Verse 10. And Moses and Aaron performed these miracles in Pharaoh's presence. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites leave the country. One more blow. What is it that Pharaoh should have learned by now? That's one. The difference between the Israelites and Egyptians. The, it, God put a geofence around them and... and the bad things didn't cross over. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What else has he learned by now? Learned by now. Okay, let me rephrase my question. What should he have learned by now? That God was in charge. And every time Moses said, I'm going to do something, what happened? This, it's happened nine, well, around, what is it? Mm, I would say 15 times at least. He's, he's, he said, this is going to happen nine times. And some of those times, Pharaoh says, please ask your God to take it away. Remember with the frogs, what was his answer to him then? What what Pharaoh answered to him when he says, when do you want me to take these frogs away? Tomorrow. Remember we talked about that last week. Tomorrow. Uh, there was another time, um, and though the hail, when, when Moses had left the town, he prayed for it to quit, and it quit. So he, he, should, have, he should have learned by now that whatever Moses said is going to happen. But he hasn't. He has it because of what? That addiction, that hardness that he has, that he will not, not bow or not give in. One more blow. This time you will ask us to leave, he says. Verse 2, verse two talks about uh, the, them asking for clothing and gold and silver. Have we read this before anywhere? How about chapter 3, verses 21 and 22? God told Moses at the very beginning, he says in verse 21, And I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably upon you. They will bring you gifts when you, when you go, so you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite lady or woman will ask for articles of silver, gold, fine clothing, 
from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and your daughters with these. It says, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. Now, the King James Version uses the word spoil there where it talks about taking the wealth of Egyptians at the very last. New King James Version, the NIV and the ESV all call it plunder. RSV and ASV calls it despoil. When do you when do you take of the plunder? When do you plunder someone or when do you take of the spoils? When you conquer somebody. Have they conquered them yet? Yes, but they don't know it. They don't know it. That would be my answer, my thoughts. Anything else about the nine plagues that we've covered? We've got the tenth one coming. We've talked, we've, we've spelled it out, but we haven't gone through it. It must be. I don't know. His officials has told him that we lay in ruins. You need to let them go. So they're starting to. Starting to. Boy, it's not like the Americans over then one one day and we're on top of it. We're not going to stand for this, are we? Yeah, I, I hear you. Oh. He's asking, where, where's the Egyptians in all this? That beat up pretty good. Yeah. I, I would be. I'm not quite sure what the time period is here. I've not read anything about that. Somebody got any idea? Uh, nobody studied that. I don't know what the time frame from the first plague to the last plague is. Uh, I'm not sure. It would have to be two or three months. So it wouldn't be a very long period of time, I wouldn't think. Uh, I would think soon as the soon as the blood turned back to to regular water, it was pretty pretty soon the frogs came, and then when the frogs left, it was pretty soon that the lice came, and it's pretty soon that the cattle died. It's pretty soon that the, fro- uh, the flies came. It was pretty. I, I, I don't see a, I don't see a whole lot of time in my thinking and, and reading of it that, that there's a whole lot of time going on here. If you have a week in between each one of them, and each one of them is a week itself, you got, what, 20 weeks? That is, uh, that's almost half a year. 26 is half a year. 13 weeks is three months. So, no, it's, it's been going on. It beat down pretty good. All right. Let's move on to chapter 12 through 14. We will not cover all this tonight. <clears throat> the feast, the, the first Passover, um, some of the notes that I looked at to look at this calls this the deliverance by blood. Uh, let's look at 12, 1 through 3. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be called the first month of, year of the year for you. Announced to the whole community of Israel that the tenth day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. Now, I'm not quite sure how far back we go, but we kind of back up from what Moses just said, right? Because Moses said midnight is what he told Pharaoh. Right? And it seems here that they're getting instructions for the for the uh, the Passover, it seems to me that they've stepped back. We've stepped back in time a little bit. How far I don't know, 
but I think we've gone back. Uh, it might not be but a day, but I think we went back from the time that Moses stood before Pharaoh and said that you're going to lose your firstborn. On the tenth day, it says there in verse 3, you're to take a lamb or a young goat. This is now the first month of the year for them. All, all the animals slain are to be eaten. Uh, if it's too much for one family, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get two families together. You're supposed to share. Uh, if you read down through there, you're going to see that everything that you slay has to be eaten. Um, see that. Uh, verse 8, the same night they must eat, they must roast the meat over the fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread uh, made without yeast. Do not eat any of the raw, meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, the legs, uh, the integrals, inner, inner organs, uh, must be roasted over the fire. Do not leave any of it till the morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. So either eat it or get rid of it, right? Uh, before morning. And you also, if you keep reading through there, you'll see where he tells them to take the blood that, of this offering and smear it where? On the sides and on the top of the doorposts. Uh, yours says lentils, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't ask me what bitter greens are. I've ate some before, but I, I don't know if they had a, a special one that they ate or not. Uh, so, would, would this bread be unleavened bread? Yeah. Yeah. But it says there in verse 8, eat, eat it along with bitter green oats um, and bread made without yeast. So that is unleavened bread. Um, verse 11. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for the Lord, for this is the Lord's Passover. You ever went to bed excited? All dressed? With Jed, I know you have Jed, but with your shoes on? Once or twice? I'm trying to think if I ever even went camping and wore my shoes to sleep in. I don't, I don't know if I have. Okay. Okay, or fishing. When else? Oh, y'all didn't get the one that I thought about, huh? Where? I heard it over here somewhere. Christmas. Christmas. Oh, you got to go back to maybe when you were 10, but could you wait for morning? Yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, and then, it, yeah, crack, crack of dawn, you're up. Um Ever had an urgency about the next day other than the things we've talked about? One that you just wanted to get here? A wedding day. Very good. Yeah. I mean, you get so excited. Huh? Hey, I was 13 before we had indoor plumbing. And it wasn't much indoor then. What was it Jeff Foxworthy said? If, you, if, if going to the restroom in the middle of the night requires a flashlight and shoes, you might be a redneck. Hey, I, I get that. I've been there. Um, we didn't much wear our shoes, though, because we hoed the yard, kept all the weeds out of it. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen those days. Here, the, here he tells them to go, to go to bed with your shoes on. Go to bed with your shoes on. We're going to see why in a few minutes. We're going to see why in a few minutes. 
uh, verses 12 through 13. On that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn, every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods, pointing back to some of the things we've already talked about, all of the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. Chapter 5 and verse 2 is where uh, Pharaoh says, is, is that so when he said, let my people go? And who is this Lord? Why should I listen him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. He has now found out. Look at uh, verse 13. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Yeah. If you keep reading through the rest of this chapter, you're going to see that there, that a festival is, a festival day is set up, the festival of unleavened bread. It, it is to last seven days. They're not to have. Oh, I read one place. Uh, no trace of yeast. If you do, you will be cut off from the community. Now, if you read through there, you'll see that they said when, when they got into the land of Canaan, you, you can't even have any yeast in the land. Not in your house, not in your town, the whole land. Okay? Um, passing over. In Exodus 12th chapter in the 23rd verse, For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on top of the sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. What was in the blood? Now, what, what was in this blood? Huh? Really? In the blood? Oh, oh, their obedience with the blood. But there's nothing in the blood, right? It's regular blood. Regular blood. Um, do I have to? <laughs> that would be a good question to ask sometimes, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Some of the things God asks us to do are so simple and there's nothing in them that I can see or that you can see, or that the world can see. What's in baptism? You get wet when you go down underwater, you come up wet. You're dry, you go down and come up wet. Okay, somehow or another. You get soaking wet, if you do it right. One of the things I, I, I talk to the prisoners about out there when we baptize out there, I say, hey, you've got to tuck your elbows in. You've got to keep them in. Because if they don't go down, I may have to dunk you again. Brother, brother Will Harrison was, was, was that, that was his thing. If, if you didn't get him all the way under the water, he wasn't covered. I've seen, I've seen him say, uh, you, I, I've seen his elbow left up. You need to. So I would always do that. We, had, we baptized one guy out there, and he, he had a stiff neck. And when we put him down, his head was staying up. So I reached up on his forehead and pushed him under. And then when I got him back up, I said, I'm sorry I did that. But Brother Will was standing on the other side, and if your head didn't go down, you weren't washed. It's a burial. Yeah. You've got to be covered. What's in the water? You can go test that water if you want to, and you can test the water anywhere else in the world, and it's all going to be the same. What's in the water? Drew, I think you nailed it on the head. It's in the obedience. It's in obedience. Yeah. It, 
And I don't know how that works, but that's what he tells me, and I believe it. You know why? Because of what Drew said. You want to take a chance? Uh, it says he will, not let, he will not permit his death angel to enter. Why? Why is he not letting the death angel enter into your house? The blood's up there. The blood's up there. Yeah, you can par- you can parallel this with the, blood, with the blood of Jesus. If the blood of Jesus has washed you of your sins, we're going to have a lesson later about following instructions, but it's a good lead into it about following instructions. 23 through 26. There's going to be detail after detail after detail after detail. I am not reading it until you. You have to read it yourself. All right. Our time is gone. So we'll pick up uh, chapter, where are we at? Chapter 12, 31. We'll pick up there next week. Thank you all. Anything? Anybody?